Aloha, I'm Carl Bonham, the executive director at Uhiro, and I'm coming to you today with a new series of Uhiro focused videos that are focusing on Uhiro research uh, that we, we want to communicate to stakeholders and the community as a whole. And we'll be bringing you uh, more of these in the future from our forecast reports to uh, important new research from Uhiro. Today's topic is housing regulation. And we all know that home prices in Hawaii are extraordinarily high. If you, if you look at 2021 data across the state, Hawaii's home prices uh, run anywhere from two to three times the national median home price. And one possible explanation for at least part of that exorbitant home prices is regulation. Uh, anything that drives up the cost or delays production of housing, anything that makes it more difficult for a builder or developer to provide new housing has the potential to restrict supply, reduce the number of houses that are available, and raise the price of housing. And so when, when we uh, look at national research on the effects of regulation, usually what researchers do is they go to the Wharton Land, re, residential Land Use Regulatory Index. We'll just call it the Wharton Index. And this is a, an index of regulatory restrictiveness. It was put together by uh, a group of economists led by Joseph Giorco at Wharton School. And what they do is they survey land use and, and planning agency, planning departments across the entire country. And in their most recent survey, they surveyed over 2,400 communities to ask questions about everything from sort of who's involved in the regulatory process. So what, what groups, what agencies uh, from courts to uh, local community groups, whether it's the county council or neighborhood boards, to state involvement. And they ask how extensive the involvement is. They also ask questions about what rules are used for, for regulation from uh, minimum lot sizes and density requirements to affordable housing requirements. And they ask about the outcome. So how long does it take to get a permit through the approval process? And wh how, what happens, how many, how many uh, rezoning requests are then? How long do they take? And they put all this information together into an index that's standardized so you can compare across the country. You can compare metro areas and counties. And unfortunately, when they updated their survey in 2019, they didn't include any counties, regulatory agencies in Hawaii. And so fortunately, they make the, the survey instrument available. And we took the survey instrument and asked the county planning agencies to fill it out. And so we now have data on uh, for all four counties in Hawaii. And we put that together and we use the same methodology that, that Giorco did uh, to calculate the Wharton Index for Hawaii. And then we make comparisons to the rest of the country. So that's the beauty of this index is it's standardized as zero. Anything greater than zero means that you're more regulated than the average community. And we make comparisons uh, to see where Hawaii stands. And uh, so for example, in, in uh, the chart here that shows, we, we look at counties that are the most expensive housing markets in the country. So we take the top 30 counties with the most expensive housing prices, and we look at their regulatory index. And as you can see, Hawaii's counties are in the top. So we, we range from the top 10% to, to even in the top five and 1%. And one thing to, to keep in mind is that uh, for Hawaii's counties, we have a single data point, right? We have one survey response. For counties in the rest of the country, you might have 10, 20, 30 metropolitan areas, different regulatory agencies uh, in different townships, et cetera. And so, in those counties, we're averaging across those. We have many data points. And so what that means is that you don't want to pay too much attention to the, to the differences across counties in the state or even small differences nationally. You want to focus more on the big picture. And so when you look at, so for example, in this chart, we look at state, a state average of these regulatory indices across all 50 states. And this is just a simple average. And it shows Hawaii at the top with a regulatory index that's much higher than, than the average of zero. And, and uh, depending on how you do the aggregation, you can weight it by population, weight it by home prices. Any way you slice it, Hawaii's regulatory environment is much more restrictive than the average area, the average community across the country. So why is that? So we dig down into the sub-indices and uh, look at some, some particular 
reasons that Hawaii stands out. So these, these different groups that are involved in the regulatory process, the state, the courts, the local, those are all statistically very important. But a couple that sort of stand out, one is the permit delay. So in Hawaii, if you look at the, the chart that, that uh, focuses on the sub-indices, what we've done is we've taken the Hawaii sub-indices and divided it by the national. And so if you look at the permit delay sub-index, uh, it's dramatically higher than the national permit delay. And what this does is it's measuring how long between a permit application for a variety of different, uh, different types of approvals, how long between the application and the decision. And even, even when you look at the most regulated markets in the country, Hawaii's permit delays are almost two times longer. So we're talking about uh, between a year and a year and a half between applying for a permit and getting approval. It, and the other, so the other area that um, Hawaii stands out is the, the affordable housing requirements. So most communities in the country, even the most regulated communities, the top quartile across the entire, the entire survey, uh, only 40% of those communities have affordable housing requirements. In Hawaii, 100% of our communities have affordable housing requirements. And so to the extent that that raises costs to builders or slows down the process, that can lead to higher prices. And so that's really the ultimate, the ultimate goal is to figure out what the role of regulation is in supply and in prices. If you look at this chart that shows us the, the relationship between home prices across all of the counties for which we have data from the American Community Survey, we, we put home prices on the vertical axis, the horizontal axis is the regulatory index, and you see this nice, well, not so nice, but uh, strong positive relationship between the two. And what that tells you is that there's a correlation between rising regulation and rising home prices. It doesn't tell you that the regulation caused that. That's something that's exceedingly difficult to, to show. But at the national level, researchers have concluded that there is a causal relationship. And so that's driving higher home prices in places that have uh, very extensive restrictive regulations. So what can be done? What are, what are the policy responses? Well, if you look at the details of what's driving Hawaii's uh, highly regulated markets, uh, one of them that stands out is permit delays. So setting targets for how long it will take to get a permit through the process and implementing new rules that make it less onerous to get approval for something that doesn't require a variance, right? You think about a standard uh, building for say a, a, a low rise building that's, that's going to be targeted at median, median income households or below. So it's going to have an affordable housing component. Make it so that it simply is approved. Right? It doesn't have to go through months and months and months of regulatory process. So that's just one example. And in fact, many, many counties in the state are already looking at things like that. And so I, I thank you for your attention. Uh, hopefully we'll be, we'll be coming to you with, with future uh, uhero focus videos uh, talking about our research. And we'd be happy to take any input. Feel free to reach out to, to me at uhero at hawaii.edu. Mahalo.